Clamp lights versus soft boxes. Let's battle it out. Hello, film worlders. It's me, your host, Micah Pendleton, and welcome to Premiere Prep. This subject was not my original plan for this episode, but I got to thinking and I realized one of the biggest things I've wanted to do since season three started was compare soft boxes to clamp lights and see just how different they really are. So here we go, clamp lights versus soft boxes. The lights I use for these tests are as follows. For the soft boxes, I used my 2400 watt 3 piece soft box light kit from Limo Studio, which I reviewed in episode 1 of this season, which you can find here. And for the clamp lights, I used 3 8 inch clamp lights, which you can find almost anywhere, and I used the same bulbs out of my soft boxes in the clamp lights to even things out a bit. The first test I did was simply a few objects on a stool. I made sure to use items that had different surface finishes, colors, and materials. That way I could see differences in color, shadows, and so on. I set the ISO on the camera, a Canon T3i, to 800 and the shutter speed to 40. And the lens I used was a kit lens with a fixed aperture of 5.6. Something I did wrong for this first test was I set the camera's ISO and shutter speed to be the proper brightness for the clamp lights. And so the soft boxes, which are about four times as bright, totally flooded the image. You can see what I mean in this side-by-side -side comparison. This is good, however, to at least demonstrate just how much brighter these soft boxes are. But that's pretty much all I got out of the first test. The second test I conducted was outside at night using my car as a test subject. I set the ISO to 6400, which is the max for this camera, and the shutter speed to 30, which is the minimum. And again, the 5.6 fixed aperture. So what you can see here is the result for the clamp lights. Totally unusable very grainy, objects are blending together if they're even visible at all. But the soft boxes on the other hand, not horrible. Still not usable, but if you're not in such an open space, you could get away with using these lights in some outdoor scenes, especially if your camera is a little bit better at low light. Now take a look at these with split screen. You can clearly see how much brighter the soft boxes are. I mean, you would expect this just by the fact that the soft boxes have four times the bulbs as the clamp lights. But what you can see here is that the footage goes from unusable to salvageable. What I did after I compared these two blew my mind. I wanted to compare the soft boxes against themselves to see the difference with and without the diffusion panels on. Warning, what you are about to see is shocking and quite frankly, it's awesome. Look at this split view. The difference is almost as major as the clamp lights versus the soft boxes with the diffusion panels on. Like, I could have turned down the ISO. I knew they would be brighter, but I had no idea it would be this much of a difference. And to complete this test, let's do a split view between all three. On the right is just the clamp lights. In the middle, the soft boxes with the diffusion panels on. And the left is the diffusion panels off. It's almost a perfect progression from one to the next. My final test was with a person, and not just any person, the one, the only, Michael Saka. I just had him sit down in front of a black screen and I set up my lights. I broke the rules a little bit by not using a backlight, but it's me. I eat rules for breakfast. With cereal. Which tend to be Lucky Charms. Anyway, here's Michael lit by the clamp lights. As you can see, it looks like the shot is being lit with a ceiling fan light or something like that. Not very bright and harsh shadows show up all over the place and his shirt looks like a solid maroon color. It's almost like he's not being lit at all, which can be a good thing. So don't look at it as only bad. Now let's see what we get with the soft boxes. And I did this test only with the diffusion panels on. The first thing you naturally notice is that it's much brighter, like no duh. But something else I see is that he is more evenly lit. The shadows are much softer and now you can see the pattern on his shirt. That's nothing to do with the effect of the lights on the shirt because we're using the same bulbs. It's just because of how much brighter they are. Let's have a look at them side by side. You should also note the difference seen on the background. So we've taken a look at the differences in these lights performances and it seems almost like the soft boxes have an all out win. But that's not really the case. As we saw in the first test, the clamp lights are plenty adequate for smaller stuff like unboxing videos. They're also much smaller than a softbox, which means they can fit into tight places. 
and they're great as little fill lights. And then of course there's a price. With a bulb you can pick up one of these clamp lights for about $15 to $20 each. My softbox kit was $125 for three. That's over double the price per light. But they're much brighter and come with stands. So the win really has to go to the softboxes, as you probably expected. They're brighter, more diverse in their abilities, and really a better value. But if there's anything I've learned in conducting these tests is that the clamp lights are definitely not worthless and can have a very important place. I think that clamp lights are a very important tool that every filmmaker should have in their arsenal. That does it for this week, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Micah Pendleton. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Remember, dream big, pay small. I'll catch you next time.